Good morning. Okay, so this morning we're going to do calisthenics and yoga. Kali yoga, so 30 minutes of calisthenics, body weight training to build some strength in your joints and your muscles, and then 30 minutes of yoga to counteract all of that hard work you've done. So let's get started. We're going to start with three different types of movement, working on triceps, shoulder and core. And um, the first version is three sets. So I'm going to go through the movement very briefly and then we're going to do the three sets, okay? So the first one is a plank position. So I'm just demonstrating. First, first one is a plank position. And when you're in plank, try not to kick your butt into the air like this. I want you to make sure that you pull the pelvis forward and protract through the upper back. Really press the knuckles down. And we're going to be here for 30 seconds. I'm going to continue with this. You can have your feet together, but if you struggle with this, maybe take your feet a little wider with the next movement because it's going to be shoulder taps. Shoulder taps might make your hips sway. That's an indication of some weakness in your core. So keep pushing the pelvis forward, contracting the glutes and thighs and pushing through the hands and try not to move your hips. So the shoulder taps are like this. You start slow, just touching the shoulders. But if you have a little bit more stability, you can move a little faster. The um, 20 shoulder taps. And then from here, we're going to walk our hands towards our feet. Come all the way up. And then we're going to do three walk-out push-ups. So you're going to walk all the way out. And you're going to push to the ground, bring your chest to the ground, and then come back up. Now, if you struggle with that, then you just bring your knees to the floor. And you can bring the chest to the floor and then come up. Okay. And the last one, again, you can keep the knees on the floor if you're still building strength, is a diamond push-up. So I want you to bring your th finger and thumb together, place it in the center of your mat. You're going to be working with our triceps here a lot. You know, burn through the elbows and bring your chest to the floor. Notice, try, not to, uh, try to avoid the curvature of the spine. Tilt the pelvis forward and push up. Okay, three of those, only three. So it's 30 second plank, 20 shoulder taps, three walkouts, push-ups, and three diamond push-ups, okay? Let's get started. All right, let's go to our first plank. 30 seconds on the clock. Push to the back, let's get going. Press the knuckles down, pull the navel in towards the spine. Make sure your fingers, your thumb are pressing down. The clock is on, your heels are pushing back, your belly is pushing in. Keep it nice and strong. Hold here. Keep pushing into the upper back. Hold. Make sure your shoulders are on top of your wrists. You can kick to the heels a little more if that's necessary. And now straight into your 20 shoulder taps. One, two, three. Four, you can follow me or go at your own pace. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Now walk your hands towards your feet. I'm all the way up to a straight spine and all the way back down. For your first walkout push-up, knees to the floor or not, one is when you come back to full standing, two, three, all the way back up, and then we've got last mop for it is your three diamond push-ups. So make sure your finger and thumb are together. You can bring your knees to the floor if it's too much. Keep that pelvis tucked, straight spine. One, two, and three. And you can rest in child's pose for 30 seconds until we are ready for the next set. There's three sets, remember. 30 seconds here. Two, 
Take a nice long inhale into your back. Nice long exhale to your hips. Roll up the spine. Walk your hands forward. Make sure your shoulders over your wrists. Curl the toes. Come into your plank pose. Pushing the pelvis forward. 30 seconds on the clock. Keep pulling that belly and really think about the navel pulling up towards the spine. Pushing into the back body, keeping a nice straight line by kicking the heels back. You can take your feet wider if you need to. Look at your hands, assess whether you are really pressing your knuckles down. Put a slight bend in the elbow to make sure your triceps, your biceps are working. Keep pulling that belly and contracting the glutes and the thigh muscles are strong. For five, for four, for three, for two, and for one. Shoulder taps. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Walk your hands towards your feet. Fully stand up. One. Walk all the way back. Push up knees or no knees. Chest to the floor. All the way back up to stay. Two. All the way back down. Three. And then we're going to walk all the way back. Replace your hands right into the middle of your mat. Toe and uh, finger and thumb. Touching. Use your knees if you're tired, otherwise challenge yourself. Keep the legs stay. One. Two. And three. Knees to the floor. Relax your body. Relax your head. Child's pose, 30 seconds. You can give your wrists a little shake if needed. You can move your forehead from right to left. Breathe into your back, buddy. Nice big breaths in between the sets. And we're going to start again in five, in four, in three, in two. And one. Walk the hands forward. Last set. Shoulders over wrists. Curl the toes. If you're getting really tired, you can use your knees a little, but it's best to try and go for the full set this time. Shoulders over wrists, pelvis forward, contract the glutes, push into the back body, press the knuckles down, spread the fingers wide, kick the heels back. You want a straight line through the body. Pull that belly in, hold. Breathe, try not to hold your breath. You want to keep a nice, consistent breath. Really pull that belly in. Tiny bend in the elbow. Thighs contracted, glutes contracted in five, four, three, two, and shoulder taps. Take your feet wider if you're getting tired and you know you can't hold this stability. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. 19, 20, walk hands to feet, straighten up, I know your arms are getting tired now, and all the way back down, chest to floor, knees to floor if needed, keep the elbows hugging into the hips, one, keep your breath consistent, all the way out to plank, bend through the elbows, chest to floor, two, better to go Knees to floor to get your chest to the floor and do the full movement. Last one, all the way out. Three. Full standing, and then walk yourself all the way back up for your last diamond push ups. Knees or no knees, I'm going to do no knee and knees. And then keep the shoulders over the wrist and go for it. One. Keep that spine straight. Two. Keep the core strong. And three. Child's pause, rest. Good. 
Breathe into the back of the body. Exhale to the hips. And then roll up your spine. So it's fine. And let's take a moment. I'm going to take you through the next three sets. All right, we're going to come off the arms for a moment. Come to a narrow squat position. Feet together. Chest elevated. And you're going to sink through the hips as low as you can go. Don't worry if it's not so high. Low, sorry. And pull the belly in as far as you can. And then straighten up. You're going to do five of those nice and controlled. And then we're going to do a pistol squat. Now I'm next to a wall and you can both use the wall if you need, okay? You can use the wall. A pistol squat, you need to extend your leg out. So you have to bend and use your left glute. So you go as low as you can go. You might be only halfway. That might be enough. If you want to, you can grab the toe. You can use the wall and go all the way down. And then come all the way back up. It's a pretty strong movement. So I'm only going to ask you to do two. One on each side. Left leg. Bend through the knee. I like to extend my arm a little bit. It keeps me balanced. And then come all the way back up. Okay, this is just a demonstration. Okay, and then we got walk-out planks. It's very similar to the last movement, except the only difference is I'm not going to ask you to push up. So you're just going to walk into a plank and walk back up. Very simple, but I'm going to ask you to do more of them, so we're going to do five. All right? And then to break, bring it into a stronger movement, we're going to do a chin-up. A chin-up is so you have to create a plank, um, a forearm plank with interlaced hands. You come off your knees ideally, but if it's not there yet, you can stay on your knees. So I'll show you both. You bring your chin to the floor in front of the fist and come back. If you can, you can straighten the legs and do the same thing. Chin to floor and then back. Try to keep the body as straight as possible. Chin to floor and then back. From here, you're going to bring it into a pincher. So you're going to walk your feet towards your hands as far as you can and try and press those heels down to work your hamstrings. And you're going to hold it for 30 seconds, pulling the shoulders away from the ears. Okay. From there, you're going to rest your knees for a second, separate the palms, bring the legs up into a pike position again. And we're going to do some tricep extensions. Quite challenging. Press the hands down, you're going to straighten through the arms. And then exhale back down. So we're going to ask you to do 10 of those, okay? All right, three sets. Let's go. All right, come to standing. Knee, feet together. You can use your arms in this, remember? If you want some more balance, stretch forward and lift your chest. One, two, three. Keep the weight in the heels. Four, five. Pistol squats. Use the wall if needed. Only go as deep as you can. You can bring your left hand to your left hip. Grab the big toe or not. And go all the way down. As low as you can go. And then back. One. Try to swap the legs. Right hand to right hip. You can always turn around and use the wall on the other side if needed. Two. Walking out plank. So take a step further to the back of your space. Walk yourself out to your full plank. Hips down. And back again. One. Give me five. Two. Three, four, five. Bring your knees to the floor. If you need your knees, otherwise, you know, good. Bring your forearms down, interlace the fingers, and elevate the knees, and bring your chin ahead of the fist. Try not to let the elbows flare. Keep the pelvis down. One, chin to floor. Two, three, four. Use your feet. Five. Walk feet to elbows. Best you can. Try to straighten the legs. If your knees are bending, don't worry. Shoulders are pulling away from ears. 30 seconds here. You should feel a deep stretch through the hamstrings. Pull the navel to the spine to help you extend the back line of fascia. Keep relaxing those shoulders even though they're tensing up right now. And try to bring more weight to the big toe. Pull the thigh muscles up. 
Keep kicking the tailbone up, pushing through the forearms. Breathe, don't forget to breathe. For five, four, three, two, and one. Bring your knees to the floor for a second. Separate the palms. Forearms should be parallel to one another. You're going to go back to your pike position or downward dog, whatever you prefer. Don't worry if your heels are still like, uh, off the floor. Either or is fine. You're going to push through the hands. Try some extension. Ten. One. Exhale down. Two. Exhale down. Three. Exhale down. Four. Exhale down. Five. Exhale down. Six. Exhale down. Seven, exhale down. Eight, exhale down. Nine, exhale down. And ten. And knees to the floor, untuck the toes, child's pose. We're doing less rest now, 20 seconds. So use this time just to soften through the arms and the shoulders and breathe into the belly. If you have tension through your wrists, give them a little movement but really try and find your breath in five four three two and one roll up the spine come to standing stretching the arms forward if needed otherwise let's go just bring your hands in five now squats one two weight to the heels three each time go a little lower four contract the glutes at the top and Five pistol squats, hands on no all hands, all the way down, and then back up. One, left side, and back up. Two, walk the feet to the back. Here, five plank walkouts. One, pushing the pelvis forward, up to standing. Don't miss out the full standing. Two. Three. and five drop the knees interlace the fingers forearms in a v triangular shape come back up into your uh, plank position for your five chin-ups let's go one two three four Five, knees to the floor, separate the palms, come up into pinch or hold, maybe walk your feet an inch in, press the heels more down, pull the belly in, thighs up, shoulders down, breathe. Notice if your hands are creeping in, if you do own a block or something like a book, hopefully you have a book in the house, you could also bring that between the forearms. To make sure your arms don't want to veer in. If you've got tight back muscles, that's a tendency. Me included. Ten more seconds. Nine. Eight. Seven. Keep the tail run up. Six. Push through the forearms. Five. Four. Three. Two. And one. Press through the hands. And come up for tricep extension. Exhale down. One. Inhale up. Exhale down, two, inhale up. Exhale down, three, inhale up. Exhale down, four, inhale up. Exhale down, five, inhale up. Exhale down, six, inhale up. Exhale down, seven, inhale up. Exhale down, eight, inhale up. Exhale down, nine, inhale up. Exhale down, ten, inhale up. Knees to the floor, child's pause, 20 seconds. Now if I am going too fast, which sometimes it feels like if you're still building strength, you don't have to A, do as much. You can reduce the reps. It doesn't have to be 10. You could take it to five. B, just take your time. Just pause the video and join again when you're done. One more inhale. One more exhale, roll up the spine, last set, you can do it, go up to standing, 
Now our squats, feet together. Let's find some more rhythm, a little faster pace than the last set. You can stretch the arms forward if you want. Let's go. One, two, three, four, five. Pistol squats on the right. One. Stretch the arms forward for, for balance. Left side. Two. Walk the feet to the back when you're ready. Five walkout planks. One. Make sure you get a straight line at the bottom. Straight line at the top. Two. Three. Four. And five. Drop your knees to the floor, interlace fingers, forearms at a triangular position. Come into your plank, forearm, ready for your five chin ups. Let's go. One, two, three, four, five. Bring the knees to the floor, separate the palms. Make sure the forearms are parallel as you lift the hips up. And get into a pike hold, maybe your feet a little bit more close towards the elbows now. Feeling more pressure through the forearms. Heels reaching down, thighs pulling up, tailbone kicking up. Big toes pressing down. Breath normal. Pull the belly in and out. Keep pushing through those forearms, feeling opening through the middle spine. Hopefully that's where you're aiming for. For five, four, three, two, last ten tricep extensions. Or five if you're tired. Let's go. One. Exhale down. Two. Exhale down. Three. Exhale down. Four. Exhale down. Five. Exhale down, six. Exhale down, seven. Exhale down, eight. Exhale down, nine. Exhale down, hold. Ten. Straighten knees to the floor, untuck toes, child's pose, forehead to the ground. 30 seconds recovery before we reach our final set in calisthenics, strength building. of this episode is four sets actually surprise <laughs> not three okay so we're going to start with push-ups i know your arms are tired but that's the whole point we're doing three workouts to build your arm strength and core strength in this one okay so if you're tired use your knees push-ups make sure your elbows are coming out at a 45 degree angle and let's land Notice I have a natural curve in my spine, so I tend to have to really think about kicking the tailbone forward to make sure that my spine is straight. You might have this in. If not, you're good to go. <laughs> Pull the belly in, and you're going to drop the chest to the floor. One. Hope your legs are straight. Two. Only two. Okay, we're going to go pi pike to tricep extension. We just did it, but we're only going to do two. One. Two. From here, I'm going to ask you to do a little jump, tuck jump. So I know some of you might be a bit frightened of jumping. If you are, just go small. So you can just bring your knees into a bent position, sink your hips to your heels. You're going to jump. If it helps, I like to talk about clapping your feet together. So think about clapping your feet. It will make you forget about the rest. Just one. That's all I'm going to ask you to do. You're going to walk your feet forward, crossing your legs and coming to a seated position. Now I want you to fall down to a hollow body. I'm going to do a split V up. So I want you to bring your left hand towards your right foot and your right hand towards your left foot. And from there, we're going to keep up after the 10. I'm going to ask you to do three pike lifts like this. Okay? If it's too much, just do a tuck lift. All right, let's go. Push up in three, in two, 
and one. One, two. Walk the feet in a little. Tricep extensions, just two. One, two. Tuck jump, one. Clap your feet. Walk your feet through. Hover into hollow body. Ten. Split the abs. One, two. Send the legs. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Hover. Three pike lifts. One, two, three. Cross the legs and forward fold. Ten seconds rest in ten. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, prepare. Three, two, and one. Push ups. Two, one, two. Walk the feet a little in. Try some extensions. One, two, one. Tuck jump. Let's go a little higher now. Clap your feet. Walk the feet through. If you're struggling with this split, you can always bend your knees. Hover, low as you can go. Ten. One, two, three, four, five, six. Point the toes. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Hover, hold. Three pike lifts. One, two, three. Cross the legs, forward fold, rest. You can relax the head in ten. Breathe, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three. Prepare, two, and one. Two push ups. One, Two, walk feet closer, tricep extensions, elbows to the floor, one, two, one, tuck jump, go high, hips parallel to shoulders if possible, all the way up, and then walk the feet through, turn pike, if you want to challenge yourself, take your arms over your head, let's go, one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Hover, hold, last three. Pike lifts. One, two, three. Hold it up there for three, two, or oh, one. And relax. Forward, fold, relax the head, breathe into your back. Well done. Part one is done. Okay, so now comes a nice recovery of our legs, our core, our arms. Take one more breath into your back body and exhale to your belly. Relax your head, roll up your spine. Come up to a tabletop position and then into lowering the hips to the floor. I want you to keep your hands underneath your shoulders and pull your elbows to your hips and bring into a, a gentle cobra. If you struggle with this, it's back sent. You can open your legs a little wider. Bring your chin away from your chest and hold. Breathe. And then exhale down. Send your arms forward and do the same again. Reach the chest up, hold. For five, relax the shoulders. Four, three, Two, and one, exhale down, lift the chest, bring the hands to the corners of the mat, the top corners of the mat, and you're going to lift all the way up now. Lift up and stretch the abdominal muscles, pull the shoulders away from the ears, the chin is parallel to the floor, you try to relax your glutes a little, so you can shake a little, <laughs> and pull the chest through the shoulders. Hold. Feeling that stretch of the fascia through the abdominals. 
way. Down. Extend your right arm out to the side, parallel to the top of your mat. Left hand stays underneath the left shoulder. You bend the left leg. Now you have to push through the left hand to roll your body over to the right. And you want to land on the front of the shoulder. Ideally, the left foot is going to hit the floor. If it doesn't, don't worry. If your leg is hovering in the air, this is okay. It's to do with the amount of openness you have on your shoulder. Make sure your arm is level with the top of the mat and try to relax your head. This is stage one. If you're much more flexible than this, you can take your hands, left hand over, interlace the fingers and make a deeper opening through the shoulders. Have a nice stretch through the thoracic spine as well, compression even. Breathe into your belly once you find a comfortable position. You can squeeze your palms if you're all the way in there, but if that's too much, just bring your left hand back forward. You can play around with these poses. As you practice them, you'll become more familiar with what's your capacity. And you can always take a step back. I just show you all the stages and then you can go beyond or stay where you are. Challenge yourself or not depending on how you feel in the day. One more inhale. One more exhale. Gently using your left hand to support, roll back to center. Bend your right elbow, right hand comes underneath the left shoulder, uh, right shoulder even. Extend the left arm out to the side, parallel to the mat. And again, push through the right hand, bend the right leg, and then roll over. Knee points to the ceiling, sole of the right foot hits the floor. And then you can stay here, relax the head, or take the arm behind and interlace the fingers. The higher the fists are, the more intense the stretch becomes. You can close your eyes down, internalize the practice, breathe. On the next inhale, exhale. Use your right hand to support and interlace the hands if they're there. And come back to both hips on the floor, extending the head forward. We're going for a crossover of the shoulders. And then you take your right hand and needle thread it underneath the left arm. So far, like you're trying to reach something on the left hand side of your mat. And then the left arm reaches over to the right side. You get a crossover position. So as you look forward, you should see both arms almost parallel to their mat. Now, some of you might be looking at that thinking, no way is that parallel to the top of my mat. That's because you have tight shoulders and tight upper spine. Don't worry, you know, it's going to come with regular practice. So wherever you are, just take an inhale, lift through the top of your head, and then exhale. Relax your throat over your left arm arm. It's going to feel a little uncomfortable as you are putting pressure on the throat. Um, but just try to relax the weight of the head, which is almost as heavy as a bowling ball, over that arm. Maybe close the eyes down and take your breath into your upper to middle back and allow that compression to happen. The heavier your head, the more you're going to feel in this pose. Try to relax the glutes, relax the lower body, and sink all your body weight over those arms. And breathe, take a nice inhale, take a nice exhale. And if you're feeling more comfortable, you can reach your fingertips further to either side of your mat. But just try and stay heavy. Nice long inhale, nice long exhale.
Nice long inhale into the upper back. Nice long exhale. And on the next inhale, slowly lift and unwind your arms until your both forearms are parallel. And then take the right arm ahead of the left arm, both parallel still. And you're going to do the same again. You're going to needle thread the left arm as far as you can to the right side of your mat and the left arm, the right arm, sorry, as far as you can to the opposite side of your mat. It might feel tighter or less tight on this side, depending. Once you're ready, you inhale through the top of the head and exhale the throat back down over the arms. Try to find a place you're comfortable. Relax the head again, close the eyes down, breathe into the upper to middle back and try to get used to that sensation of the throat being slightly compressed because the heavier that head is, the more compression you're going to feel, but the more release you're going to get through the shoulders. Nice long inhale, nice long exhale. Reach your fingertips a little further to either side if it's available, but otherwise just try to stay relaxed through the head and the lower body. And on the next inhale you can slowly release and bring the forearms parallel to one another and then when you're ready turn it into sphinx sphinx forearms parallel to one another facing the front of your mat and the chest pulling through shoulders relaxed breathing here tractioning the elbows towards the hips bringing that chest through the shoulders getting that nice length through the body again stretch through the Abs, relax the glutes. If you're feeling some tension in the lower spine, take your feet wider and even take your hands wider. Pull your belly in a little bit because that's going to help support the lower back. Keep pulling the shoulder blades together so the chest comes up and that action of the chest pulling through the shoulders is going to help pull away from the lower spine and relieve any discomfort you might feel. Take one more inhale. Exhale, soften through the elbows, bring the hands underneath the shoulders, curl the toes under and push yourself up into a downward dog position. You can pad through the feet, your body stretched a little bit here in the calisthenic space. Just shimmy and shake the ribs. And then slow that down, take your right leg up into the air behind you very slowly. And then gently bring that right knee into your chest, bring the shoulders over the wrists and drop the right foot through the hands. Drop the left knee down, take your right hand to the inside of the left, uh, right foot even. <laughs> and from here you can keep the knee on the floor. If you have discomfort in the knee, you can put a pillow underneath. Or you can play around and give it more fluid. You can take that knee off and use your toes to coordinate the same sort of movement, just the circular motion. Right to left, left to right. Until you feel a little bit more openness through that left hip flexor. Soften the knee to the ground, untuck the toes and bring the forearms down if that's available. If it's not, you can always put a block underneath and rest your forearms on the block. We're just going to stay here. You can even relax the head. And again, the softer you are through the left hip, the more you exhale into it, the more you're going to feel on this. If your arms are straight, this is also fine. You can still relax the head. You can still get a beautiful stretch. Each one is going to provide a slightly different stretch, but it's all in the same area. around with it, moving in and out of forearms and no forearms, or whatever you feel. Keep thinking about the right toe pressing in so the right knee comes in towards the right shoulder as well to get some activation through the right inner thigh. And keep softening through that left hip. One more inhale, one more exhale. 
And if your other forearms come back up, pull the back toes under and elevate the left knee, the back knee. I want you to bring your right hand and your left hand onto your knee and sink through the hips and take the heel back again. Nice and strong, pressing the right heel down. And bring your hands to your heart and bring your left elbow to the outside of your right knee. And do a little twist here. Keep taking the back heel back and all relaxing the shoulders away from the ears. Look behind you here and really kick that back heel back. The back leg should be straight, thigh muscles should be contracted. We should get a stretch through the piriformis muscle, the rectory, the IT, the inner thighs, the glutes, the thighs. Pull the navel in and up. The more you pull your belly in, the more twist you're going to get. Inhale through the top of the head and exhale, twist. Press the back heel down, inhale. Exhale. And then ground that front heel and bring your hands to either side of the right foot. And then walk that right foot towards the left hand and lower the right knee down into a pigeon. Come up into an up swan position, balancing on the fingertips. And this is going to be different depending on the tightness of your hips. So if you feel like you're leaning to the right a little bit too much, take a block or pillow and place it underneath this right thigh. What you want is your two hips parallel on the mat. For some of you, you might want to pull the heel, the right heel, closer to the left hip to make it easier to do that. For those more open in the hips, take your right heel away from your left hip. One more squaring up with the top of your mat to get a deeper stretch. We can soften and bring the forearms down now and rest the left forehead on the left hand, which rests on top of the right hand. Breathe here, nice long inhale, nice long exhale. I'm not staying here too long, but you want to transition further into a 45 degree angle pigeon pose. So take another inhale, rise the head up, and then walk your hands to the left. 45 degrees from the front of your mat, and if you want, you can extend the arms out and drop the forehead further down. This will take it more into the piriformis, the outer thigh muscle. You should feel a deep stretch here. Notice what's happening with your left hip. If it's starting to rise, gently pull it down towards the ground and hold. And breathe into your belly once you've found that comfy spot. If it's not so comfortable, that's a good indication something's shifting. For five. For four. For three. For two. And four. Inhale, rise. Come back to center. Curl the back toes under. Release the right leg and bring it back into down dog. This should feel a rush of blood through that leg and it should feel pretty nice actually. We're going to do that all again on the other side. So slow it down. Bring the left leg up behind you gently. Bring the left knee to your chest. Shoulders over the Drop left foot between hands. Drop right knee down. Find a position where you're comfortable. You can play around with this. Clockwise, anti-clockwise motion, taking the knee off the floor, just to gently awaken the hip flexor. And when you're ready, drop the right knee, bring the left hand inside the left foot, untuck the back toes, stay upright, or take the forearms down, or elevate, and bring something underneath the forearms. Bringing the left toe in, a little bit more pressure there, left inner heel down, left knee reaching towards left shoulder, relax right hip. Soften the weight of the head to the ground and breathe. Keep softening that right hip down. One more inhale. One more exhale. If you're on the forearms, come back up. Curl the toes. And then walk that left hand to the left knee. Right hand to the right knee. And lift the right knee up. And lift yourself up. Hands to chest. Namaste. And then right elbow to the outside of the left knee. Pull the navel to the spine. And twist. Keep kicking the back heel back. Take an inhale through the top of the head. Exhale and twist. 
hold for five. Relax the left toes, fold. Relax the shoulders, three. Pull the belly in, two. And one. Hands come to either side of the foot. And then walk the left foot towards the right hand. Release the left knee behind the left forearm into pigeon pose, using that block or pillow underneath the left glute if it suits or left thigh, outer thigh. Bring the left heel closer to the left right hip if it's more comfortable to get the hips parallel or bring that heel further away from more challenge. Untuck the back toes, find your swan position, lifting the chest up, and then soften left hand, right hand onto the left, forearm down. And you can gently walk through the hips if you want a little bit more fluidity, a little bit more release. Holding here, not for long, for five. Find your breath, four. Relax the shoulders, three. Two. And on the one, inhale, rise. Walk your arms 45 degrees to the top of it from your top of mat. And then extend the arms forward and relax the forehead down. Keep pulling that right hip down. It's going to feel most likely more intense. So really work on that right hip pulling down. Opening up the outer thigh glutes of the left leg. Breathe for five. For four. For three. For two. And for one, inhale, rise. Walk your hands back to center. Curl the back toes under. Push yourself up into a down dog. Release that left leg. And all of these poses, if you want to hold them longer in each phase, you can do. Your choice, it's your practice. And then when you're ready, walk your feet towards your hands. Cross your ankles. Come into a seated position and extend your legs forward. Separate the legs. Relax into your Pana Savasana, taking an inhale into your chest, softening through the fingertips, exhale, through to the belly, just make sure the top of the head is reaching to the back of your space, so the neck is nice and long, one more inhale into the chest, one more exhale to the belly, Namaste.